Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Well, in my last video, I started to answer some questions that I see online and to make it a little bit more fun or maybe uh, to frustrate me a little bit more, I've been throwing up some of the answers that I see online as well. And many of these questions aren't just posed on one site or on one group or wherever. They're posed over and over and over again. And the answers are bizarre over and over and over again. And yes, there are some people who answer it very good, but those are usually the people who are actually not respected. They're usually the people that don't get any likes to their answers. And some of these other people get the likes. So I'm going through today two. And I'm going to get through two today. Uh, I didn't in my last video. Two questions that are very similar and some of the answers to them and what I think is the problem to each one or the solution to each one. So the first one is, my images are all very bright. Not sure why they were not like that before. Now, again, if you're putting a question up online, please try to give some more information. Give some information like what do you shoot in? What mode? Do you shoot in manual? Do you shoot in program mode? Do you shoot in aperture priority or do you shoot in shutter priority? Give some more information. Do you shoot in a studio or do you shoot outside? Do you just give some more information because it really helps to get you the answer. And this was all the information that they gave and they never actually responded to any of the solutions, which could be a good thing because some of the solutions were bizarre. So I never got any more information. But let's see what some of the solutions were. Yeah, again, very first one. Do you shoot mirrorless? Come on, people. You're beating this to, like just to death. Like mirrorless is not the salvation for every problem. It, it just isn't. Uh, you need to buy a mirrorless. Well, that goes right along with the first one. What lenses do you use? Really don't see much of a tie-in to the lenses to overexposure all the time. But, okay. Are your batteries charged? Again, a lot of these are so similar. Like... Every time somebody posts something, it's the same or a group of the same responses. It's almost like people just copy and paste everywhere. Uh, is your, it is your camera card. Now, come on, people. Why would it be your camera card to get overexposed pictures? Think about it. Think, think, think. So, yeah, n none of those I don't think it is. Um, now, this one actually, the, the next one actually has a little grain of truth to it. But I'll explain why in a second. You need to shoot in raw. Then you don't need to worry about your exposure. Seriously, you need to shoot in raw and not worry about your exposure. You can correct a lot more in raw, but you still have to worry about getting the exposure correct to begin with. You cannot fix a picture that is absolutely black. You cannot fix a picture that is absolutely white. I don't care what camera, I don't care how many megapixels, I don't care anything about it, and I don't care if you shoot in RAW, I don't care what. You cannot shoot a picture that is destroyed and make it look perfect no matter what. So shooting in RAW, not going to help. Do you edit in Photoshop? This is another question. Like, What's the difference between Lightroom and Photoshop? Really, there is none. What's the difference between using a Canon um, editing program and the Nikon editing program or using another editing program. It's just, it just, there, there is no, none. And then this one is probably the most frustrating one of the, them all. And they're all frustrating. Sony cameras don't overexpose. Seriously? Come on people. All right. So what do I think could be the cause of this? Well, there's a few things that it could be, could be some simple things and there could be some more uh, difficult things or complicated or even expensive things. So the first thing that I would check, depending upon what mode you shoot in, if you shoot in program mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, first thing I would do is check your exposure compensation to see if you've set it to overexpose. If all your pictures are too bright, if everything is bright, chances are you've set your exposure to be too high. So you've set, gone in, change your exposure compensation so it's a stop or two or three over, and you forgot to reset it. That would be the first thing I would check. Now, if you shoot in manual, chances are you're not adjusting manual. Or maybe your dial got moved to manual and you think it's in program mode. That could be a problem. I've had that happen. On some cameras, 
they have multiple adjustments on it for ISO. Uh, Nikon is one that we found out in our studio. And uh, one lady had a Nikon camera and it took beautiful pictures set at 60th of a second at f8. Her friend had the identical camera set at 60th of a second at f8. They both set them at 400 ISO. The problem was, was that her friend's camera had another ISO setting that was set to auto and it would go up and down like a yo-yo. And here was a problem. It overrode what they were doing. So well, once we found it out, they both shot identical. So check, see if you have an auto ISO on, if it's a Nikon, if you've set one of the ISOs to one and one to the other, check to make sure that your settings are consistent. Um, some people shoot with studio flashes or with flashes on their camera and they set their ISO to auto when they're setting their camera to manual. And this can be a problem because the camera thinks of one thing and you do the other thing and it can overexpose. Now, more expensive, it could be your shutter's going. It could be. It could be that your shutter is not opening and closing as fast as it should. Could be. It could be the aperture on your lens is causing a problem. You may have it set to F8, but maybe it's not adjusting properly. Had a lady who bought a used lens came in to me and she had the exact problem. Everything was overexposed. What happened was we found that her lens that she had had some sand in it and it had affected the aperture. And even when she set the aperture to a lower aperture so that it wasn't letting as much light, then guess what? It didn't move and she still had the problem. So those were the, are some of the things that I would check. So I would go ahead and check those before I really panicked. And as I say all the time, if you happen to have a problem and you can't figure it out, the best thing to do is to go through and factory reset your camera to put it back to the day that you got it. Start from there and see if that solves your problems. So the next question, let's get over here to the next question. And this one's very similar. Um, it, it's a little bit different, but it's quite similar. It's an exposure problem again. And it is, I'm having problems getting the proper exposure on my pictures. Some are really dark and some are really light. Now, there's a lot of potential reasons for this. Um, so let's get into some of what people suggested online. And I think you'll find that it's pretty bizarre again. Uh, again, number one, number one response was uh, actually number, number one and number two were the same as the previous one. Do you shoot mirrorless? And you need to buy a mirrorless. Seriously. In fact, in the you need to buy a mirrorless, the, there was about a 50-50 split there between you need to buy a mirrorless camera that has more megapixels or just you need to buy a mirrorless camera. Seriously, people, come on. Okay, number three, do you shoot in RAW? That seems to be a common response. What camera do you use? What? Now, there could be issues with a camera. It could be something. But generally, a camera is not going to be the reason that some are bright and some are dark. Um, you need to switch to, and then there's a lot of answers to this one. Basic, you need to switch to Sony, you need to switch to Nikon, you need to switch to Canon. Um, this person did not say what they shoot with, whether it was mirrorless or whether it was Canon, Nikon, or Sony. They just said this is what was happening, and these were the responses. The next group of responses was, again, what lens? That seems to come up an awful lot. Do you shoot with a crop sensor? Crop sensors seem to have a bad reputation. If there's ever a problem, people seem to point to crop sensors. The next one, this was from one website, and I won't tell you which website it's from, but this is the response to just about everything when people have a problem. You need to charge more. Seriously, people, if you can't get a good exposure, Charging more for your packages is not going to do any good. Come on, people. Um, what make of camera card do you use? Again, it's a camera card thing. And you need more megapixels. Seriously? Come on, people. It's just, uh, again, it just blows my mind sometimes. So let's look at some of the reasons that it could be a problem. 
Now, if this is just something that started, if you have a camera and it's been shooting fine for the longest time, and then all of a sudden everything is too bright or too dark, here's some of the things that you could have done. First thing that I would check is, see if your ISO is set to what it was before. Many people, me included, have gone through and set the ISO to auto when I meant to set it to 100 because it's just one click past 100 and it goes to auto. And this can be a problem, especially in the studio. If you're using studio lights, especially with flashes, depending how you're using the flashes, this can be a problem. So that's one of the first things I would check. Again, check your exposure compensation. Usually exposure compensation makes it all black or all white or light and dark or whatever you want to call it. It usually doesn't vary. The next thing is your program mode that you're using. Are you usually shooting on program mode and you've set it to aperture priority or shutter priority? Are you using a flash on shutter priority or aperture priority? There's a lot of problems if you do that. Some cameras have major issues with using a flash on those two modes. Have you set it to manual? Here, here's something that happened many years ago. I had a student come to one of my classes. He says he was having huge issues with his Nikon camera, huge issues. And it was a nice camera. Well, here's what we found. While we were at the seminar, while we went outside on a field trip, his pictures looked perfect. The next week he came into my studio and he says, now look, they're all underexposed. And they were, they were all underexposed. I went, this is weird. Look, checked everything out. Everything looked perfect. Went outside, we shot some pictures outside of my studio and everything was overexposed. Well, here's what we found. He was able to adjust his aperture on his camera with no problem. But for some reason, he adjusted his shutter speed, but nothing happened on the camera. So he would adjust it to 60th of a second. He would adjust it to two seconds. He would adjust it to three thousandths of a second. And it all was the same speed. Don't know why. He actually ended up getting rid of that camera and buying a new camera because we could not figure it out. And it was an older camera and he thought, no, nope, there's no sense that I should send it out to be repaired. But it just, it kept shooting at the same shutter speed every single time. And he couldn't adjust it for nothing. That could be an issue as well. So check those things. One big area that people tend to run into problems with is they change the metering mode. Now, I don't know what metering mode this person was using, but some people have it on spot metering mode. Then they bump it and it goes to evaluative. Or they bump it from evaluative to spot. Or they bump it to this or they bump it to that. Or they have it set to one point to take an uh, exposure and they're using another point. Check your exposure. Check, check what you're using. Check whether it's spot, evaluative. Check overall. what Whatever it is, check to see if that's the same. One way you can do this is if you have a picture where it worked perfectly six months ago, Go in and read the EXIF information on that file. Then compare it to the file that you just shot that's either overexposed or underexposed. See what has changed on that. And yes, there can be a lot of information there, but check to see if you've changed settings. Maybe you've been shooting in program mode and now you're shooting in aperture priority and you're not adjusting it correctly for that mode. Could be many, many things. So check those things out. So until next time, well, I'll find out some more uh, cool answers or cool questions to the answers or whatever it is, and we'll go through them at that time. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Get out there and take some amazing pictures. Bye-bye now.